investment in the health of the shoreline of Illinois, of Chicago, and of the Great Lakes at large. So here we are, sitting on the shores of what we affectionately call America's third coast, the Great Lakes. At Shedd Aquarium, our mission is to spark compassion, curiosity, and conservation for the aquatic animal world. And just last week, we announced our strategic centennial commitment, a thrust forward to amplify this mission for generations to come. So our Great Lakes are a wonder, home to 160 species of freshwater fish and an engine of the blue economy here in the Great Lakes region. A blue economy responsible for 1.3 million jobs and generating $82 billion in wages annually. Shedd Aquarium has long been an advocate for science-driven solutions to protect this natural resource. We applaud the work of our friends and colleagues at the Alliance of the Great Lakes, Joel's incredible leadership, Molly, your tireless and strategic work to protect our Great Lakes from the potentially devastating impact of invasive carp. Our shorelines are also being battered by climate change and extreme weather. Mayor Lightfoot's leadership and her colleagues and our partners at the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative have worked this past year to help secure vital resources to make a resilient shoreline. It will be clear now and into the future that our Illinois leadership on this issue is clear, starting with Senator Durbin, Senator Duckworth, Mayor Lightfoot, and our entire Illinois delegation, with partners also in Wisconsin and Michigan, we want to thank you. We want to thank you on behalf of the millions of guests that are waiting to come to this aquarium to connect with their freshwater fish and be moved through this empathy to take action for animals. And that is what today is all about. Celebrating an investment in our natural resources and our collective impact to protect them. I want to welcome Senator Durbin and thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget, uh, and thank you all for being here today. Let me acknowledge some folks who are not on the program but are part of the uh, celebration and recognition today. Commissioner Gia Biaggi, Chicago Department of Transportation. Good to see you again. We're going to be meeting like this a lot. Interim Commissioner Rosa Escarino. I hope I get close to pronouncing that. Is that pretty close? She is with the Chicago Park District. Angela Tovar, the Chief Sustainability Officer of the City of Chicago. John Rogner. Assistant Director of the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Alderman Jim Kappelman, good to see you again, Jim. Brian Hopkins, I don't know if Brian made it yet. I think he'll be here soon. Maria Haddon, who I said hello to on the way in. Alderman Harry Osterman, Harry, good to see you again. I think Leslie Harrison and Greg Mitchell are on the way. Leslie's here, oh good, glad, glad that you've joined us. And of course, I'm honored to be here with the Mayor of Chicago and my colleagues from Congress and elements of the federal government that are engaged in this announcement today. We have been given an extraordinary gift, extraordinarily beautiful, inestimable, inestimable value. It's a gift we don't deserve. And that gift, of course, is right behind us in Lake Michigan and the Great Lakes. We didn't do anything to deserve it, but we sure have a responsibility to look at it and realize we have a responsibility toward this lake and toward the Great Lakes. And that's why we're here today, to say that our generation, starting with the leadership in Washington, is going to make an investment in our relationship to that great gift of Lake Michigan. And it's a substantial investment. We know what we need to set out to do. First, we need to protect the Great Lakes. There's been an effort underway for decades to do that, maybe longer. And some of the efforts have been successful, some not successful. One of the things which we are threatened with today is invasive species. The invasive species, particularly the Asian carp, really threaten the very existence of the fisheries and the ecological balance of Lake Michigan. We take it seriously. 
For most, almost 10 years, I have been putting money in the budget to fight that damn Asian carp. We have reports that we've been successful so far. We've stopped it from making it to the Great Lakes, but we need to do more. The Brandon Road project that's included in the infrastructure bill is $225 million worth of effort to stop that species from destroying the Great Lakes. It is money well spent, and it's been successful to date. The second part of this goes to the issue of the shoreline of Lake Michigan. What's happened to it? Under former Mayor Daley, I worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to put in the modern shoreline that we see today, some nine miles of it, with the Army Corps of Engineers, who's always part of our effort when it comes to Lake Michigan. There is more to do, and more importantly, we need to assess the current fragile state of the Lake, Lake Michigan shoreline all along the city of Chicago and beyond. I know my colleagues will tell you personal stories from their districts. The shoreline is under assault. It's under assault from the elements, from global warming, from deterioration over time. And we are going to make an investment of one and a half million dollars to do a survey of that shoreline and to really spell out the priorities that we need to make to invest in the next generation of shoreline to protect us. The reason that we're here today is because a president of the United States named Joe Biden decided that his highest priority was to pass the largest infrastructure bill in the history of the United States. All of the congressmen, myself and Senator Duckworth, supported that bill. We cast our votes for a bill that is $1.3 trillion. It's going to bring back billions and billions of dollars to the state of Illinois that can be used to make highways safer, bridges safer, mass transit, investments in critical infrastructure involving our airways, and particularly when it comes to Great Lakes and today, Lake Michigan. That is money sent by Illinois taxpayers to Washington that's coming home. It's coming home to make this state stronger and the economy grow. We have work to do, and I want to thank my colleagues for being here. I will make my remarks as brief as possible by just telling you this is a partnership. We are in partnership with our state government and Governor Pritzker. We're in partnership with the county. Oh, the lights came on. With the county as well as with the city of Chicago. I know that Mayor Lori Lightfoot is committed to this cause as we are, and it's my honor to introduce her now to say a few words. Mayor Lightfoot. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you, uh, Senator Durbin, um, as always, for your leadership um, and for your support of making sure that Chicago uh, gets the resources that it needs uh, from the federal government. I also want to thank our entire um, Illinois federal delegation, led by Senator Durbin um, and Senator Duckworth. <clears throat> Their leadership to protect our city's crown jewel, um, Lake Michigan shoreline, has been nothing short of magnificent, and we all owe them a debt of gratitude and praise, um, as well as uh, moving the Brandon Road project ahead, which will deepen our region's efforts to protect the Great Lakes. <clears throat> And Congressman Foster uh, will talk a little bit more about that. I also want to thank the Army Corps of Engineers for their partnership in this work. We would not be moving forward without their advocacy on our behalf uh, in the federal government. And I'm grateful that we now have broken the long jam, gotten the resources to fund this study, and move forward. I also want to acknowledge and thank uh, the members of the Chicago City Council uh, who are here uh, with us. Uh, these members are on the front lines of climate change every single day. Rising lake levels and the devastation that it causes to our residents, they have to contend with this because they're hearing about it, they're seeing it, and are living in the communities that are most deeply affected. From north to south and in between, I want to thank all of you uh, for your tireless advocacy and work on behalf of making sure that our lakeshore is preserved for our residents. So thank you very much. Lake Michigan is a crucial and iconic part of Chicago. We not only rely upon it for our clean water, but its beautiful shoreline draws residents and visitors alike to our city, making it vital to our tourism industry and economy as a whole. It is the thing that sets us apart from every other city in the country. 
Over the years, however, a series of environmental risks have threatened the beauty of our shoreline. Rising lake levels, climate change, years of erosion, and much more. These risks, of course, are not cost-free. High lake levels and erosion, for example, impact communities uh, along our entire shoreline. And that includes people living in residential areas on our north and our south sides. One of the recent storm surges that hit, I remember on the south side, and Alderman Harrison can attest to this, residents blocks away from the lake had flooding in their basement. Parking garages, buildings, blocks away from the lake were seeing the effect. So climate change is real, and this is an issue that we must address head on, and this investment will go a long way in making that happen. Our parks, our paths and roads, and resources our residents rely upon every single day for recreation and transportation are also impacted by our lakeshore. Repairing our shoreline is therefore critical to the health and well-being of our residents and the environment, and it's been, long been a priority for our city. And while we've worked to repair urgent damage, more long-term solutions are needed to protect our shoreline and the communities who live, work, and play alongside of it. Solutions that could take all, ultimately over $500 million, but it will be an investment well worth the cost. And if you look at the census, where we have grown as a city is along our lakeshore. So all the more reason, again, why we need to make sure that we protect this incredibly valuable asset. That's why, since day one of my administration, I have been pushing for the funding of the Chicago Shoreline General Reevaluation Report, and let's just say simply, the Shoreline Study. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers have been active partners in our shoreline efforts to date, um, but they are operating on a study, as you just heard from the Senator, that is 25 years old. And due to the many climate impacts on the shoreline, and particularly over the last five years, a reevaluation re of this study is absolutely essential. We need it to protect against the rising lake levels. So I'm happy to report that the city has committed $1.5 million as our local match, meaning that with this $1.5 million federal investment, the shoreline study is now fully funded, and folks, we are ready to go. And we have also demonstrated our commitment to repairing our shoreline through two city-led projects funded through Chicago Works, our capital plan that was approved by the City Council um, two budget cycles ago, our city's first multi-year, multi-billion dollar infrastructure initiative in decades. First important uh, project, and, and near and dear to my heart, is Promontory Point in the Hyde Park area. Promontory Point is so iconic. It was one of the first um, places that I gravitated towards when I moved to Chicago many years ago. It's on the National Register for Historic uh, Places, meaning that the eventual shoreline solution at this location must be coordinated with the Illinois Historic Preservation Officer, as well as our very engaged, right, Leslie? Very engaged local community. They're going to have one or two opinions about what happens at Promontory Point. The second area that's important is the Morgan Shoal project. The Morgan Shoal segment offers opportunities for new amenities and much needed land expansion just north of Promontory Point. In May of last year, the Army Corps completed a $925,000 emergency contract to armor a portion of Morgan Shoal, which supported the additional $1.5 million the city put uh, towards the project in 2020. Currently, the Morgan Shoal project is in the design process, and we look forward to holding public meetings this summer to move it along in a way that reflects the needs of the surrounding uh, community. I'll be there with you. Don't worry. We are deeply committed to completing both of these projects in the near future, as the shoreline segments they cover are two of the most complex in the entire shoreline project. With the funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law, and we should give it up to President Biden um, and the others who pass this, historic funding of infrastructure, not just talking about it, but actually getting it done. With the funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law, 
we have an unprecedented opportunity to make real progress on repairing our beloved shoreline in other areas and meeting our current and future environmental needs. And this new funding for the shoreline is an incredible step forward. Similarly, the Brandon Road project is critical to our region and to the health of our Great Lakes and water supply. By constructing a new engineered channel at Brandon Road to test and deploy a range of technologies, this project will prevent Asian carp, an invasive, terrible species of fish, from moving further north into our Great Lakes. And I want to again thank Senator Durbin and the entire Illinois federal delegation uh, for securing the funding we need to complete these two very important projects, as well as the Army Corps of Engineers, um, our local uh, partners in the City Council. I also need to thank um, Gia Biaggi of the Chicago Department of Transportation, um, Rosa Escarano of the Chicago Park District. These are all partnerships that are important. And I should say, you know, we're all Democrats, but that doesn't mean that we all get along. Um, we're going to disagree from time to time on issues. But the thing that unites us is that we have to come together at every level of government to make sure that we are doing the people's work. And this announcement today, in my view, is a great testament of what happens when we rally together, when we listen to each other, but importantly, when we listen to our residents and our neighbors and we focus on what their needs are. When we do that in a united front, then nothing can stop us from getting good work done on behalf of the residents of Chicago. And now it is my great pleasure uh, to invite to the podium Congressman Bobby Rush. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mayor Lightfoot, Senator Nerman, and Dr. Coughlin, and to all the those who are members of the best delegation in the entire nation, the Illinois delegation, to my colleagues who are present and those who are on the way and those who cannot be with us this morning. I'm just delighted to be here uh, with you this morning and to begin to discuss with you the fact that we all we all can agree that climate change is present among each and every one of us, present among the citizens of the world. And Lake Michigan, because of climate change and the lack of disinvestment, uh, Lake Michigan uh, over the past decades has fallen victim to severe erosion and storm da damage. And this devastation is just merely a sign, a warning, a forewarning of what is to come without swift, without decisive action on the part of all of us, particularly those who are in government and on every level of government. We do not have the luxury of waiting anymore. It is upon us now. The erosion is visible day by day, week by week. It's present. We can see it. We witness it. And so, therefore, there's no time for delay. Uh, we have to move, move quickly. President Biden has heard uh, our cry, uh, the members of Congress and the House and the Senate levels have heard our cry. They have responded to our work and they are making the necessary first step uh, to expand the Chicago shoreline project. And for that, we are collectively very grateful. I am particularly glad and I want to join the mayor uh, in 
the focus, uh, the extended focus uh, to, to the South Land, South Shore uh, uh, Drive expansion, especially that uh, project that's centered around 67th Street in this current initiative. Uh, as some of you all know that I have been over the years, along with the alderman who is present with us right uh, today, I have been fighting for equity for South Lake Shore Line equity. I am tired, sick and tired of all the money for uh, federal dollars to stop at Roosevelt Road. We, Chicago's boundaries is not Roosevelt Road. Chicago's boundaries, the link, the Lake Lake Michigan extends beyond Roosevelt Road. It includes the residents of the South uh, Lakes, Lakeshore uh, area, uh, South Shore area, and we want our fair share of these federal dollars. So this plan is a plan that I endorse. It's a plan that is very good, but I'm not totally satisfied with it because I do believe in that although it singles out some uh, areas along the South uh, Link Shore area, it doesn't include it all. There is erosion at 67th Street, yes, but also at 63rd Street. There's erosion at, uh, as the mayor mentioned, at Promontory Point, 57th Street. There's erosion at 47th Street and other places. So I'm going to call on the Army Corps of Engineers um, to take the spirit of this delegation, the spirit of this uh, press conference to heart and to make sure that they present to the citizens of this city what I call South Lakefront equity in terms of its planning, the, uh, its protection, its development, as redevelopment, we must be included more vigorously, more pointedly, uh, and more financially in the uh, efforts to improve the link uh, shore, the link front. I want to love, you love link front. And again, I say, our beloved link front don't end at Roosevelt Road. And now my, my esteemed colleague from the second congressional district. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm so excited to be here this morning to talk about this much needed funding coming to Chicago. Now, we can't really hear back there, so I'm sure I'm gonna repeat some of the same things that you already heard. So. Excuse me for that, but as you've heard already, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has allocated $1.5 million in funding from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act to the Chicago South Line Storm Damage Reduction Project. This funding will support ongoing efforts to restore the Chicago shoreline after coastal storm damage by completing the general reevaluation report needed to expand the project and mitigate the significant impacts of climate ch change on the shoreline. This is fantastic news because our shoreline is already facing some serious repairs, as our um, aldermen and women know. And because of the climate crisis, we're going to see more catastrophic weather events, changes to water tables, and other changes to weather patterns that will impact our shoreline. It is imperative that we not only make this necess these necessary repairs, but also prepare for the future so that the Chicago shoreline, which is so important to our residents for recreation and to our economy, for tourism, is protected for many generations to come. The Lake Michigan shoreline is especially important to my constituents in South Chicago, and I have to give a shout out to all the women, Leslie Harrison, because when I ran for Congress, I wasn't even the Congresswoman yet, she had me come to give me a tour. So I'm so glad you're here to hear this. I know this funding is gonna help us protect the vital asset for us. 
We wrote, as you probably know already, the Army Corps of Engineers last month, urging them to invest in this project using funds from the infrastructure law. But this is on top of many letters that uh, I, as a congresswoman for that area, have written. But the good news is Chicago and all of Illinois are going to continue to see infrastructure money coming in. There are 2,374 bridges in poor condition, and since 2011, commute times have increased by more than 7% in Illinois. On average, every Illinois driver pays $609 per year in costs due to driving on roads in need of repair. Funding for this transformational bipartisan infrastructure law is coming right here to Illinois, and I can't wait to see the progress we are going to be able to make for every single resident because of it. And I'm hoping to be at ribbon cuttings uh, to show all the work that we've done uh, in the Senate and in Congress. truly an honor, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce my fabulous colleague, Jan Schakowsky. Well, this is the third time in really just a few days that members of Congress, uh, Lori Lightfoot, our mayor, um, and many of you have, have joined us to um, celebrate the, if you will, the um, concrete improvements that we're going to see that we, uh, we have thanks to the leadership of President Joe Biden, um, in passing the Bipartisan Infrastructure and Jobs Act. First, we were at the uh, bridge by the, uh, the uh, Des Plaines River that has been rated poor, that is going to be helped um, through the state of Illinois by the money from this, uh, this legislation. Then we were with uh, Mayor Lightfoot, um, certainly with uh, Dick Durbin, who's been to all three of these, uh, of these events, um, to celebrate the massive improvement of the uh, Red Line um, and Purple Line project that's going to be such a great difference and make sure that, all of our, that so many of our uh, L stations are accessible and, and much, much better. And today, here we are to uh, celebrate the um, wonderful work that's going to be done on Lake Michigan's shoreline. You know, Lake Michigan is such a treasure. I'm sure everybody's talked about that. It's hard to hear from the, the, from the back. But I have had the joy of living um, less than a mile from the lake for decades now. And while Lake Michigan really defines the nature of the city of Chicago is such a, a, a treasure and has really defined every summer of my life, having been born here in, in Chicago. But the beaches um, throughout my district, including um, we have the Juneway, Rogers, um, and Howard Street beaches are, have been so eroded because of the um, high water in, in the lake and also because of the extreme weather. Um, I know that I've been hearing from many of my constituents that live in condos along the lake that they are very concerned um, that the wave uh, action has undermined the building infrastructure. The, the, uh, uh, the foundations, and this is a real problem. I see um, Alderman Maria Haddon here, who certainly gets those calls as, as well. Um, so the, uh, the, the infrastructure will get the uh, Army Corps of Reng Engineers to be free to do the, uh, the, the work. The well over a million dollars that is necessary will be there to uh, keep our wonderful, fabulous lake that people rely on for their water, for commerce, for recreation, for generations to come. I want to give a special shout out to our senators, Dick Durbin, who always shows up, to um, Senator Tammy Duckworth, who has been with us all the way to make these projects uh, happen, 
And uh, so we are so honored to be here today. I'm going to end my stay here by going over and looking at the um, Asian carp that's uh, swimming around Big Daddy over there. Um, but I have to tell you, I have had Asian carp sandwiches better to eat than to see going in our waterways. Um, and now it is uh, my pleasure to uh, ask uh, my colleague along the lakefront, uh, Mike Quigley, to come up and say his words. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, knowing we were coming to the shed, my colleague said, please, Quigley, no puns about fish. And I said, I, I certainly wouldn't on porpoise. <laughs> Too easy. It is great to be back today, especially at the shed. Uh, you've all heard about their extraordinarily ambitious plan, and under the great leadership of shed, we look forward to helping them. Um, because, as I said, get used to these. Um, and just to decide, in the next Congress, I'm going to be the uh, ranking or chair uh, Democrat on the committee that funds transportation, housing, and urban development. Uh, it is my it is my intention for that urban development to include aid for ongoing infrastructure for museums, forest preserves, zoos, park districts, and aquariums, as it should be. A lot of things involve urban development, but these cultural educational institutions are absolutely critical, and we thank the Shed for their extraordinary efforts. Hey, look. As Robin said, you can't hear back there, so I'm assuming everything that needs to be said about what we're going to do here has been said. But I'll put it this way. Bottom line, if it rolls, floats, and flies, it goes through Chicago. So we got to do this right, and it's a long overdue to actually put real dollars toward that end. Because it's not just for Chicago, it's for the region. And it's not just for the region, it's for the whole country. So, get used to these. As Jan said a couple weeks ago, many of you were with many of us in Des Plaines talking about the 2,300 bridges in Illinois that need to be replaced. Earlier in the week, we talked about at the Belmont L with the Brown Line flyover to improve efficiency in the artery of Chicago, make it safer, and to extend that red line so every Chicagoan can get access to public transportation. But coming soon to a press conference near you, we'll have more events dealing with the shoreline, our waterways, more events dealing with bridging the digital divide in this country, events involving uh, expansion of electric vehicle access, and our grid system so we can operate our grid system safely, efficiently in addressing climate change. And of course, I understand there's some airports in this region. So be ready for all of those things as we move forward. We're so far behind right now, this puts a dent in it. For everyone questioning the Biden administration, every president in my lifetime has tried to get this done. He got it done. And it's a cornerstone to our advancement and competitive. As you know, we're getting outspent by our economic competitors, somewhere between four to one to six to one, putting us farther and farther behind. That can't happen. So this begins the end of that in an effort toward, again, transforming our country where it should be. As FDR did when he electrified rural America, as Eisenhower did when he built the, when he built the interstate highway system. This is a step in those same directions, building infrastructure for the next hundred years, not the last. Now, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Bill Foster. I was going to introduce him as a thoughtful, hardworking, dedicated uh, member of Congress. He has, for some reason, asked me to introduce him as that carp guy physicist, our friend Bill Foster. Well, 
Well, thank you, thank you, Mike, for that uh, gracious introduction, and good morning, everyone. So I'm Congressman Bill Foster. I'm a scientist, a businessman. It's my honor to represent the 11th Congressional District of Illinois in the U.S. House. It's a district that represents Aurora, Joliet, and Naperville, the second, third, and fourth largest cities in Illinois, and also the Brandon Road Lock and Dam Project, which represents the last best line of defense against the invasion of the Asian carp. And they're reaching the upper Des Plaines River, uh, the Mississippi, well, the, sorry, Lake Michigan, and the entire Great Lakes Basin and all of its tributaries. Uh, this has been a long time coming. The, these invasive species were introduced about 40 years ago down in Arkansas. They've been moving up the Great Lake, the Mississippi Basin since then. About 15 years ago, we recognized the threat and installed a set of electric barriers, which everyone recognized would not be sufficient to stop this threat. And uh, in the 10 years, that's why in the 10 years that I've been representing the area with the, the Asian carp barrier, it's been one of my highest priorities. I can't count the number of congressional delegations, Democratic and Republican, that I brought in to show them the site, show them the threat, and, and emphasize the importance of getting this money in place. It's hard to appreciate this threat unless you see it up close. About six years ago, my son took me down to show me this new sport that had been developed in response to the Asian carp. So he went down um, to an infested area of the river down by Peoria. And you get in an outboard, uh, outboard uh, boat and you sit on either side of the engine and with a compound bow. And you just drive through these infested areas and these gigantic carp jump out of the, bow, of the stern wave and you shoot them as they jump. And it is, you know, it sounds like fun, but, but seeing an entire river or an entire lake full of this invasive species is just makes you sick to your stomach. And I guarantee we do not want these in every tributary in the Great Lakes Basin. And um, so it's also, um, well, I guess it's, I'm really very proud that it's thanks to the investment of the JOBS Act that the Army Corps of Engineers finally has the resources uh, that it needs to finish planning and begin construction of this. Um, and so with that, I will introduce Steve Fisher, the Deputy District Engineer of the Chicago District, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Steve Fisher. I'm the Deputy District Engineer with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Chicago District. And on behalf of uh, Colonel Paul Culberson and the entire Chicago District, we are thrilled to receive funding through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act to kick off the uh, Chicago Shoreline General Reevaluation Report. Senator Durbin, Mayor Lightfoot, Representative Rush, Representative Kelly, Repres Representative Schakowsky, and Representative Quigley. We greatly appreciate your combined efforts to make this, uh, this opportunity come to fruition. What an idyllic setting today to talk about the Chicago shoreline. Some of you recall that 30 years ago we kicked off the initial study to take a look at the Chicago, uh, Chicago lakefront. As a result of that study, nearly nine and a half miles of Chicago lakefront has been um, uh, protected through the combined efforts of the C City of Chicago, the City Parks Department, or Park District, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's important to note that those reaches have proven to be very resilient in recent storm events. By contrast, some of you may recall that just two years ago in January, the, uh, we had a winter storm event uh, that coincided with historic water levels. And you'll notice that the, uh, um, at the time, the amount of infrastructure damage as well as impacts to transportation that occurred in those unprotected reaches. This reevaluation report will explore significant uh, coastal storm damage, storm damage experienced along the ris at risk reaches of the Lake Michigan shoreline that were not included in the original report. Those included sites from Juneway Terrace down through La Rabita Children's Hospital down to the South Water Purification Plant. Once funds are received, our first action is to sit down with our partners, the City of Chicago, the Department of Transportation, and the Parks District uh, um, to sign a cost share agreement. The expectation is we'll complete this study in three years at a cost of $3 million. There'll be multiple opportunities for the public to engage in, in this study, from the initial kickoff opportunity all the way to review of the final draft report. 
a final report will be submitted to Congress for their um, uh, authorization and then ultimately for appropriation of construction funds. Again, we appreciate Congress's funding for this great opportunity and we look forward to working with our partners, the City of Chicago, the City Park District, and the uh, um, Chicago Department of Transportation. Again, thanks for your time today, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Colonel Jess Curry, Commander of Rock Island District. Good morning. Uh, my name is Colonel Jess Curry from the Rock Island District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. First, let me just express my thanks to Senator Durbin, Mayor Lightfoot, and all these distinguished guests for really giving me the opportunity to make a few brief comments this morning uh, for this crowd. Uh, so as a member of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, it's, I'm one of 36,000, roughly 36,000 engineers that proudly say we are our nation's engineers. Part of our mission is to deliver on our nation's toughest challenges. One of those challenges that I'm here to talk about briefly today is the Brandon Road Interbasin Project. And you've heard much about it already this morning, but let me just say how proud and excited we are to be a part of this. I also, I also appreciate the opportunity this morning to express a few things. First, my thanks to our members of Congress, our other representatives and partners that have given us the opportunity to continue to move this project forward. Secondly, I want to express our commitment Again, as our nation's engineers, and specifically from Rock Island District, State of Illinois, m many other partners and, and folks out there that are going to deliver on this project, we remain absolutely committed to solving this problem for our nation and protecting one of our nation's most important uh, natural resources. Finally, I want to express my confidence, uh, confidence in this partnership that I just mentioned. The state of Illinois, the other Great Lakes states that are all engaged in working with the Corps of Engineers to deliver on this project are absolutely working, working well together at this time to finalize those designs and to move forward towards construction. So very soon you'll be able to see at Brandon Road Lock and Dam the evidence of this, of this investment uh, being put into the, into the Lock and Dam and moving forward towards this protection against this invasive species. So I'm certainly proud to be able to be here this morning. Again, thank you, Senator Durbin, Mayor Lightfoot, for welcoming us here, and uh, look forward to seeing continued progress out at Brandon Road as we again work together to solve our nation's toughest challenges. At this point, it's my honor to introduce, uh, introduce our next speaker this morning. Sir. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is the Great Lakes celebration, and I cannot think of any better example of the power of the Great Lakes than to be in this magnificent room in the Shedd Aquarium uh, with these elected officials from the state of Illinois joining us to talk about why our fresh water is so important. My name is Joel Brumeyer. I'm the president of the Alliance for the Great Lakes, and I want to start by thanking Senator Durbin and the entire Illinois delegation for their leadership on the issue of stopping invasive carp from getting into Lake Michigan uh, and ensuring that uh, the Infrastructure Act uh, was made available to dedicate these funds to the Brandon Road Project. I also want to recognize Mayor Lightfoot for her commitment to uh, working to make sure that Chicago and Lake Michigan are dealing with the realities of a changing climate. Um, the Alliance for the Great Lakes has worked on this issue for more than a decade. I want to take a moment to acknowledge and thank my colleague Molly Flanagan, uh, without whom I can confidently say that we would not be standing here today. Um, thank you to Molly. Um, the carp pose an incredible threat to Lake Michigan uh, and the rest of the Great Lakes. They uh, outcompete native fish. They breed faster than native fish. They threaten to undermine the Great Lakes $7 billion sport fishery and the $16 billion recreational boating industry. We're here today to talk about this investment because protecting those assets for the Great Lakes, it's not just an environmental issue. It's not just an economic issue. It goes directly to the way of life of the people of the Great Lakes region here in Illinois and across the United States and Canada. And I'm so glad that we're making this investment. Um, the Brandon Road Lock and Dam project uh, near Joliet is the most important project to prevent the establishment of invasive carp in the Great Lakes. I also want to say I really appreciate the work of the Army Corps of Engineers and their efforts to bring together the states of Illinois and Michigan in particular to make sure that the states are ready to move forward as soon as this funding um, comes in, becomes in place. 
This is a historic commitment that fully funds the project's planning, engineering, and design, as well as the first phase of project construction, so the Corps can move quickly to building these protections when design work is complete. And in this case, we really have had to slow down uh, to very much speed up, and I'm so glad that I can say that today. I also uh, want to say that the Alliance joins with the governors of the Great Lakes states and many voices from around the region to continue to work uh, and support the change in cost share to make sure that this project could be addressed through 100 percent federal funds. We're not there yet, but this is a, uh, a regional project of national importance and we're going to continue that effort in the years to come. Um, I want to uh, again thank and acknowledge Mayor Lightfoot for her foresight and commitment to making sure that Chicago's precious lakefront is resilient in the face of a changing climate. It can be here for people to enjoy today and tomorrow. Again, a tremendous both environmental and economic asset, but really one that is at the heart of Chicagoans' way of life. Uh, and I hope that Chicago's work there can also be an example to the rest of the Great Lakes cities and states. With that, I'll say thank you again uh, to our elected officials present, uh, and let's enjoy the celebration of the Great Lakes. I hope that the speeches were very good because we couldn't hear any of them. All I heard was Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky promise Asian carp sandwiches. I don't know. Thank you very much. We'll be around here if there are any questions. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. And here we're going to kick off the Q&A. Members of the media, thank you very much for joining us. My colleague Alejandro will bring down the mic. Two questions for reporters. I'm just going to ask you if you keep your mask on while asking the question. Let's kick it off with Aaron from uh, Hyde Park here. Thank you. Hey, I've got one from Mary N. Aferd, one from uh, Maxwell Evans at Law Club, and two from my colleague uh, Mark Monaghan at the Herald. Let's start with my colleague uh, for the Army Corps of Engineers, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. He asks, will the general reevaluation report include production of a framework plan for promontory point similar in scope and purpose to the Morgan Shoal framework plan that is now being used to guide the design and construction of the Morgan Shoal project? Yeah, the simple answer here is that uh, Promontory Point will be part of the reevaluation report, no doubt about it. Congresswoman Kelly recently wrote a letter to the Army Corps of Engineers supporting a true preservation approach for repairing the limestone revetment at Promontory Point. Will the Army Corps of Engineers be following a true preservation approach when designing repair work for Promontory Point? So not, not to get into the study before it ever starts here, but definitely everything will be uh, examined as we normally do with any of our studies. For Maxwell Evans, uh, who asked for the Army Corps and Representative Kelly, South Shore residents and state legislators under the Southside Lakefront Erosion Task Force proposed shoreline improvements to project the private homes near 73rd Street. The GRR identified six areas to take a closer look at lakefront improvements. Will officials consider adding the South Shore project to that list? Uh, there's definitely right. So there were aspects of the original report that were not included in, in the original uh, report. So all those will be taken a look at again. If there's opportunities to take a look at other areas, those will be explored if, 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 if we can get to that point. For the mayor, for Marianne Ahern, Mayor, the new soccer training center, what are your goals to get that built? Will there be TIF funds? Well, we're obviously, first of all, um, very grateful to uh, Joe Mansueto and the entire uh, uh, Chicago Fire team um, who worked really diligently uh, with the CHA um, and our team uh, to make sure that this facility stayed in the city of Chicago. I think it's a great uh, testament to uh, the fact that um, the Chicago Fire is very committed uh, to the city of Chicago, and I think it's going to have a, a, a lot of incredible benefits uh, to the residents in the immediate area near the uh, former Abel Homes, um, and also just redound to the benefit uh, of the city. Uh, we are working with them on a number of different aspects, but first things first, which is we're announcing this today, 
Um, we need to engage with the community uh, to make sure that they are fully read in and that we understand from them what their needs are, um, and we'll reveal uh, more details about uh, the financing of this as time comes. Thank you. Hi there. I was just wondering, uh, besides the roses, that seemed to be the main focus of, of me, what are some of the other issues that we're seeing along the shoreline that might be repaired? So, so there's multiple opportunities to take a look at there, right? So, and I'll give you an example. Um, you, you, you've seen what has been put, in, or at least what's been installed in, in the first nine, nine and a half miles to date, right? So it could look something similar to that. There's also opportunities to take a look at concepts that, that are like natural nature-based features. So trying to take a look at a whole series of options that we might have and what's the best fit for each of those respective areas. Mayor, if I can ask you an off-topic question. Um, this afternoon, uh, Chief Judge uh, Evans is going to be announcing some new policy initiatives, uh, and we understand it may include some cognitive behavior therapy for people who are coming through the judicial system. Yesterday, we saw you, the superintendent, and Kim Fox sort of saying you're working together. Mm -hmm. what, where do things stand with, with your relationship with, with Judge Evans, and, and how do you think this new program is going to impact the efforts to reduce violence? I don't know the specifics of the program, so I'm not going to be able to opine about that, but um, we have been in conversation, um, the, the collective we, um, with the chief judge and folks from the county uh, for quite some time about the need not to just dump people back out on the street, uh, particularly young people, but that we need to make sure that they are provided with um, the host of wraparound services that are now available in the community. The city of Chicago has made a deep commitment uh, to a lot of resources, both for adults, but also for young people, particularly around mental health services, um, job readiness, and a, a host of other things. What we've asked the um, chief judge and, and the other judges in the court to do is to consider making sure that you give people that come before you uh, an opportunity to engage with these services. We had this conversation with our last big meeting uh, with the chief judge um, and the presiding judges, both of the criminal division um, and the juvenile division. So I'm interested in hearing what uh, the chief judge says, but this, if he is going to make good on the things that we've been talking about, that's a positive step forward. Question for Senator Durbin, if you would, obviously uh, the Supreme Court um, nominee is going to be something that's coming before your judicial committee. Is it time in your mind, Senator Durbin, for a black woman to be nominated to and wanted to approve to the Supreme Court? I believe it is, but more importantly, President Joe Biden believes it is. How fast do you perceive this is going to happen? Uh, I received a call yesterday from the President's Chief of Staff, 9.30 in the morning, and told me that Justice Breyer was going to retire. He asked me to keep it under my hat because they weren't going to announce it until today. Uh, that lasted about 30 minutes before it broke in the news, uh, and I asked uh, Mr. Klain do you have a nominee? He said, we're in the process. No one's been chosen yet. So it, it's a little early to predict the timetable for this hearing. Uh, yes, what do you say to skeptics who would say millions of dollars and years have been spent on, as you put it, these darn Asian cards? Um, what convinces you that you can get to this problem, solve this problem? The damn thing hasn't made it to the lake. We stopped it. They'd be in the lake at this point, overrunning the lake, changing the ecology of the Great Lakes water system. I mean, this has been a, a determined, behind-the-scenes effort for a long time. And expensive, but... Yes. Consider the alternative. How expensive would that be when we're affecting the Great Lakes fisheries and changing the ecology of the lake? And who knows what comes next? I'm told that we brought the Asian carp to America to deal with our fear of chemicals in lakes and rivers, and it got out of hand when it escaped the areas where it was being propagated and got into the Mississippi River. Uh, and I felt a, a special responsibility here, once having been out on those rivers and seen what the great a these Asian carp are doing, to stop it from being part of the Great Lakes water system. I did it, frankly, without any fanfare or people noticing for years, but then they took it to heart and realized this was a critical environmental move. It's worked.
the first line of your story ought to be, so far we've been successful. We can't quit. We can't drop our guard. Similarly, skeptics will say, the link goes up, the link goes down. How do you convince skeptics that, as you put it, climate change is here and this has to be addressed? I would suggest one thing. Open your eyes. Look around at what's happening here. Extreme weather events uh, and the erosion of shorelines from oceans and lakes and rivers all across the United States are fair warning that we ought to be prepared. The $3 million may sound like a small amount in comparison to the total infrastructure bill, but this investment at this moment in history may be the most important investment for this city and for this area in terms of making sure that we are prepared for what is coming inevitably. And the people who are in denial about this uh, are in denial about reality.